As a meeting point between Latin America and the United States, Mexico's always been a pivotal point in the drugs trade. In the 80s, it funneled cocaine from the cartels of Colombia to the huge and growing number of users in the US. And when those cartels were dismantled and high-profile traffickers like Pablo Escobar were taken out, the Mexican gangs simply took over the wholesaling themselves. Today, more than 90% of cocaine goes through Mexico to the US. It's a major supplier of heroin, crystal meth, and marijuana as well, a trade worth around $30 billion a year for Mexico. The country's notoriously corrupt police and judicial system have helped. A poorly paid officer can triple his pay by turning a blind eye to the drug gangs. The presidency of Felipe Calderon saw the military employed to crack down on the cartels, but it's estimated 120,000 people have died in the war on drugs. And successive presidents north of the border have tried to stop the narcotic flow too, providing aid to Mexico, strengthening border security and bolstering Mexican security services. It's led to some high-profile successes, the killing or capture of 25 of the leading cartel figures, including Joaquin Guzman, El Chapo, the most powerful drug trafficker in the world, the US said, and now back inside after a decade on the run from prison. But still the drugs flow north and weapons head south into Mexico, a deadly and lucrative exchange that authorities seem unable to control. What the crackdown has done is caused the cartels to splinter. There are now said to be as many as 80 gangs driving a cycle of violence in which dozens of local leaders, including at least 40 mayors and former mayors, have been murdered. Some 27,000 people are on the list of the so-called disappeared as well. Mexico's president, Enrique Peña Nieto, has tried to divert attention away from the drug problem and win more inward investment into the country. But the extortion and kidnapping continues. And the disappearance of 43 students reportedly captured by police and then handed over to a crime syndicate caused nationwide anger against the government. In fact, it is the Mexican people, tired of the failures of their elected officials, who've done as much as anyone to tackle the cartels, forming their own vigilante groups to fight the trade that still blights their country. Greg Milam, Sky News.